We swingers! We thought y'all been to picked up on that by now. You know. Man, you too high. You need to come down and be level right here. Come on down to you, bro. Level right there. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep Keep on coming right there. Hey. Hey. What's up, y'all? This is the question and answer segment. You all asked. We go answer. Yeah. So let's get right on into We met because we were in the same wedding party. Exactly. Right? There were people that were trying to hook us up. Mm -hmm. I did not want to date anybody. So we became best friends. Like best friends to the point where all the other people that we were hanging with disappeared. disappeared. And then we kind of just got engaged. We weren't dating. One day he came to my apartment. When I opened the door, I laid him out because I didn't want company that day. And he <laughs> dropped on one knee. He proposed. I put him out. I accepted the ring. 17 years later, we married. Yeah. I know that's a very confusing story for most of you all. Yeah, it ain't your, your <laughs> typical cookie cutter type. <laughs> and it morphed into a viral video of our wedding day that yeah. is still making us money to this day. So we're going to link that below. If you haven't seen our wedding video that had went viral, yes. you need to check that out. The kids thing, I always knew that I didn't want to be nobody's mama. Him, on the other hand, he kind of wanted to be somebody's yeah. daddy. And we got in a relationship. I did want kids and... And that's the thing about a relationship is give or take, you know, some things you have to, you know, put to the side. And, that's, and I thought she was worth it. That was a deal breaker for me. But I think that God answered my prayer all these years. It has never happened. Yeah. And now I have a hysterectomy. It definitely ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Someone asked if we would adopt. We actually thought about <laughs> doing it at one time. We were interested in transitional foster care, meaning that the child had somewhere <clears> to go, but the but that place wasn't quite ready or the paperwork wasn't in line. So you could have someone for a week, month, two, three months. But then I did not want to get attached to a child and have them leave my home because that would be very hard for me. Just because I don't want children doesn't mean I don't love children. I mm. love children and children love me. When did you start feeling each other in regards to knowing they were who you wanted to spend your life with? Um, We always tell people there was never a switch in our relationship. We was just best friends and it just morphed into us getting married. So pretty much we've been best friends for like 20 years. I met her back in 2000. Yeah, so it was like, after a while I was like, you know what, this woman is definitely the one for me. You know, for a lack of better term, I felt it in my spirit. What's the story behind your wedding day praise? If y'all know what we went through to get down that you aisle. You would be praising too. Just for the sake of time, some of the wedding party dropped out on the day of the wedding. Some people that were supposed to be performing in the wedding dropped, dropped out, out the same week. Some family members was missing. Yeah. It, not this one. Open oh, <laughs> Was missing and we had to do a, a search rescue. Yeah, yeah so. And, and we're saying it real light. It was a real serious matter. It was very serious. Very serious. My father did not show up to the wedding was like one of my only requests was for him to finally show up for me and he did not and i noticed immediately and then at the altar it became our moment for once mm -hmm. and it became a moment and a covenant between us and god and we felt his presence and it was just something that just happened it wasn't calculated like some people go and they're like i'm gonna get my shout on at my wedding i didn't want to get my shout on i was too cute <laughs> to get my shout on what i'm gonna mess up my hair that good makeup job fuck yeah you was moving you you, you were flopping on me <laughs> i look like a snowball in the floor y'all <laughs> what was it about the other that made you say he or she is the one it just it just happened it's it like it's, it and if anybody is in a good relationship right now you already know that you just you just know yes. sometimes it's, sometimes it's not even words or or something you can tell somebody it just comes with your experience so i was like just keep you know dating people until you feel that hey i think this is the one and even you if you think it's the one it might not even be the one let me give you a piece of i went advice. through a whole lot of bad relationships before i got to and her and me too yeah <laughs> when you find the person that moves with you like water moves mm. that's the one wow we move together and there's no conversation about that's it that's right and that happened organic y'all let us know if y'all want to learn about what we call marital pivot if we get enough interest, we'll come back and we'll do a whole vlog and tell y'all about marital pivoting. If there was one thing you could change about the other, what would it be and why? I would say that my husband is a zero to 100 kind of person. That works in certain circumstances, 
but if it's something that I don't agree with, I kind of just have to wait that skit out for him to come off of 100 because there's no in between with that. I wish in certain circumstances he would have a balance. <clears throat> it works for other things. Like he loves hard. If he love you, he love you. If he mm -hmm. don't like you, you don't even have to question it. Yeah. He don't like you. I know that if I did change something about her, it would change our whole experience because everything kind of works together for the good of them who love the Lord. That's a call. Are you really being careful purpose. with this question? No, no. She she pisses me off because <laughs> she she puts herself she puts her stuff down so much. What do you mean? Yes, you know, I, you know. I call myself no, fat all yeah, the time. Yeah, I always call myself fat and I say, you're not fat. Like, you're perfect. That don't if, get it twisted. If, it's not that I have like low self-esteem or nothing like that. No, I you, do you just put yourself fat. down. You just push it. <laughs> it's and, not putting it myself you, you down. You do put yourself it down. It is acknowledging. Hey, hey, did I try to fix your part that you gave me? <laughs> so don't try to fix my part. No, that, that she you. won't be putting herself down. That she's perfect the way that she is. She got some a-hole ways, but she's perfect oh, the way yes. she is. We're both Leos. How <laughs> yeah. can you not be an a-hole and be a Leo? <laughs> you were born with a-holeness. Yeah. <laughs> How has time helped your relationship? It hasn't. And I'm a firm believer that time does not help anything. What time does, time gives you an opportunity to change the now so that yeah. your future can be either one way or the other. Just like they say, time heals all wounds. That's a guy doing life. How do you balance work in a healthy relationship? We just keep work at work and our relationship, our relationship. Sometimes we come home and talk skit about the company for a little while, but that's it. Now, our other work, YouTube, Yeah. that's a little <clears throat> bit more challenging to balance yeah. because YouTube happens all the time in our free time. Mm -hmm. So there are times where, especially during this time where I've been healing and I've been out of work, Stanley was the dominant force in most of the vlogs that y'all seen for the last month mm -hmm. because I communicated. This might have been what the person was asking because I know in some relationships you got people that are workhorses and all they want to do is work, 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 work. What I would say with that, if that's what you were asking, if you the person that's going out there and working like that, if there is no plan of why you're working like that, you're just doing it just to be doing it, that lets me know that you're trying to get away from home problems. It's your coping mechanism. If if you're working hard and you're not giving into your relationship yeah. and there's no plan for that, yeah. They've checked out. What was the hardest year of your marriage? There were a couple of hard years. When his father passed, that was a very hard year. Yes. Because my husband emotionally shut off. Yeah, I was, that was gone. When he turned yeah. 40, he's only 40 now. <laughs> he went through what I went through at 40, where you start, you start, <laughs> <laughs> you start doing too god doing much you're, you're living in the moment of trying to figure out the person that you have been for 39 years and maybe the person that you may want to experience this year and maybe become in the years to come and i didn't like him at all for almost the whole part of last year all the way up until probably about maybe six months ago i loved him I ain't like him. I ain't like her either. How about that? But never to the part where we felt like we were like something yeah, was yeah. going to happen yeah. with our relationship. But it was growing pains. The hardest year was actually was years was when we kept disappearing. And we kind of told y'all about when I used to have to go and be that search party to find her. At some points, I'm like, what the hell I done got myself into? And it was many times that she told me, you know what? Go. Go. Leave. Don't even stay. But I, I never. Because I knew this was my yeah, life. Everybody's I, not cut out for this. I never gave her a reason to say that. It's just that she didn't want to put me through that. But I just knew it was something about Lynette that I wanted in my life. My life, and I know that I needed it. So I was willing to go through that. And i'm glad i did yeah. if the tables were turned i'm gonna be honest i don't know if i could and it may be because i've lived it for so long mm -hmm. i don't know if i could endure something like that voluntarily i love him i i i have a gym and i don't know what i did to deserve it and, and uh, i know this ain't part of the question a lot of times people say say marital goals and we did a video on about marital relationship goals. well goals. relationship goals so um we can link that'll be linked down in the description but when you say that Yep. When you see when you see a successful relationship, nine times out of ten, they done been through some skit, some hardcore skit that 
pushed or birthed that relationship that they have. If you ain't prepared to go through that, yeah. But we're not preaching no. that in order to have a successful relationship. But you gotta go through something. That some. you gotta go through hell. Because no. I don't believe that at no, all. And not real, get, getting your tail beat and no, being verbally no. abused. We ain't, uh -uh. Talking, we ain't talking about that. And real no. talk, if you really want to think about it in retrospect, we haven't dealt with really anything crazy in our marriage. It's all, it's all outside yeah. of what we have to deal with because of the yeah. connections that we have, our family. So as far as us, you know, we've had some hiccups, surgeries, challenges here and there. Our, all of our stuff has been other people. Oh, in other words, all the skit we went through is- It ain't sum, even us. It's the sum total of who we are that made us who we are today. And again, if y'all want uh, even more detail, as much as we can without putting it dam all out yeah, there. damaging some people, uh, we would just put that down. I'm there. gonna write we, a book. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah we could we could come back with a full video on that too. Just let us know if you want. That. What are some tips on keeping a relationship together, kind of like yours? Don't forget to be everything that that person needs. Did you, did y'all read between the lines on that? Yeah. What I'm trying to say is I'm about to get real nasty for y'all. You've been together as long as we've been together. You have done it all. And don't be afraid to tap into your inner Sasha. Whoever it is that you need to be to make things a little bit more heightened, you, my friend, need to tap into that. And if you have a problem tapping into that, then maybe there's some other things that you need to work on yourself. We've always said, talk about everything mm -hmm. even if it hurts even if you know the end of the conversation before the beginning you need to keep the lines of communication open because yeah. you never want to get to a point where your mate don't talk to you mm -hmm. and we can give you all the tips you have to try stuff to see if stuff works for your relationship because we could give you tips on how we do stuff and you try to go back and implement that in your marriage or it your relationship work. and it don't work it's work we can't give you a, a magic pill and it, boom you gonna have this Wonderful relationship. How do you keep the spark in y'all's marriage? That's, That's easy. easy. We swingers. swingers. We thought y'all been picked up on that by now. <laughs> One day in the comments, I thought somebody had picked up on it. But yeah, whoever we bring or whoever we swing with, it's agreed upon. I mean, it may not work for your relationship, but yeah, it works for ours. But we deal mainly with couples, though. Yeah, people who got something to lose. Cause yeah, don't deal so with yeah, don't single. don't be no single fuck, man. Always date each other because that's what we pick the swingers up at anyway. Yeah. Like, just like we said earlier, you have to try stuff, man. You know, you might have to go to the sex store. No, you don't have to go. You must go. Visit adamandeve.com. Boo. Yeah, so you got to keep got to try it because unfortunately, the sex can get stale if you don't keep putting stuff on it. Once again, we can. <laughs> <laughs> We're telling too much about uh, Yeah, we could we could do another video. No, we can't. No, we can't. Maybe, no, we can't. But keep it kind of like <laughs> you can't keep it PG and give you some some ideas. And Not some the stuff. stuff we do. Yeah, I mean, but we man, we may have to use Stop like talking. Stop talking. yeah. I'm digging myself in the hole. <laughs> you just figure it out. Just just go online and type in. How no, no, to no, 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 no. Nah, y'all know we ain't swinging. Y'all <laughs> probably was like, wait a minute, wait a I minute. I knew it. But some of y'all probably was like, hey, send them an email. See, send them an email. See if they will hook up with us. <laughs> I say a minimum of dating your spouse or your girlfriend, boyfriend at least once a week because life will come in and take over and you guys will never spend time together. I'll be willing to try stuff you ain't never tried before. So you might have to get you a... Uh, <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> cut that out i'm gonna make sure that that's cut out make sure that appearance wise you look the way that your mate is attracted to what i mean by that is stanley loves for me to have like these natural big hair type of dudes and he mm -hmm. loves when i'm dolled up so i make sure that when we have time where it's just us that i am that he knows that I love when his beard is nice, yeah. sharp, and crisp. Mm -hmm. Yep. And but not he, too big, though. You but know, not get, too big. He get too big, she be like, like, uh, bruh, you know. Bring that in. Do you guys still have individual friends or only married couples? Um, I do have individual friends, but they are married. Um, I don't have any friends that are single at the moment. I got them all. But it brings a balance. And have you ever seen a single person that had a boring life? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. So you when lived you, it up. Yeah, so when you're around your single friends, 
you get to live vicariously and you're able to see some of the things that mm -hmm. they are doing to make life exciting for them because as a married person you may not even have access to those things anymore who's the funniest of both of you winner has to tell the best joke funnier one yes yeah because i'm sarcastic let's tell the joke i can't it comes naturally <laughs> what are some of the things you worked on as a single to help prepare you for marriage first you have to be in love with being single first do everything that you ever wanted to do travel get your money right love yourself be so content with being single that when somebody comes along you ain't thinking about them when i was single i started living my life as if i was married I would clean as if I was married. I would cook as if I was married. I act like she was there. Hey, I know that might be sound a little weird. Yeah, when I met him, I was like, did you what? just get out of a relationship or something? <laughs> yeah. Not the whole time. I, I, lived, I lived my single part. And then when I said, I, I, I think I want to get married, that's when I started. I lived like a single person. I partied. I went out. I went on trips. I, had, I hooked up with people. Not, not like that. I mean, sometimes. That happens when you're single too. You have options, God darn it. Well, Never you, mind. Oh, you got options when you're married too. You do. But, yeah, but yeah. it's frowned upon, like Alan mm -hmm. said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and when you're single, don't let nobody tell you, oh, you don't have a hit list. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Advice for newlyweds your top three tips on marriage communication, money, and travel. Yes. And when I say money, I'm not talking about you have to make a bunch of money yeah because you can do a lot with a little but you have to manage it correctly yes and in the beginning of your marriage figure out who's better at what and you start putting trust in that person to do what their strength allows them to do exactly in our marriage i am very good with money but he is very good with making money grow yeah so when it comes to things the bills are paid and then this one makes it grow yeah. and while i watch it and with the communication that will stop all kinds of unnecessary freaking problems man unnecessary fights learn how each other communicate travel travel does something for you internally that just resets you reset that's it and it exposes you to a world that you didn't know exists and if yeah. you're from a small town like we are yeah you only know what you're exposed to so traveling expands you it makes you reach for more it makes you want to be better yeah so traveling is so important because it's essential to your personal growth It's essential to your growth as a couple uh travel for me just an uh, opportunity to relax and enjoy your spouse without no distractions. You don't have to worry about cooking nothing, cleaning nothing. It's just y'all can enjoy each other without any restrictions. And that's what traveling does for you. Turn up. Yeah. Have a good time. Yep. Meet a couple to swing with. <laughs> and my bonus, keep people out your fucking business. Yes. Because the people that got the most to say is the ones with the most jacked up relationships. Or don't got one relationship at all. How is it having a parent living with you? It's very much an adjustment. It's a compromise. And for me, because it is my mom, it took me a while to settle into it because I felt like it was something that was forced upon me. And it's not like you made the decision that one day I want, I want. It was like, no, you need. But it has been really good. Honestly, it's made us closer because our relationship was almost non-existent mm -hmm. before this. There's benefits to it. You know, she helps out. It has a little bit of financial benefit as well. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it has its challenges. I, I do miss sometimes, you know, we're walking around here butterball naked. naked or you can get your groove on anywhere you want in the house. That's another way that, that I ain't even think about that. Yeah. yeah, try to try to mix it up. You know, just don't only do it in the bedroom if you got the liberty yeah. to do so. So yeah, I do miss times like that. Yeah, where but it's like, I wherever it love, happens, just drop it. Yeah, but I do love the benefits of like you said, she, she loved to clean. So we turn her loose and let her have her way. Yeah, we do. Short of the long, it's an adjustment, it's difficult. There will be adjustments that you need to make. You need to put a lock on your bed. That's what I'm ready to say. Yep. Get some locks on your bedroom door. Because I don't care how much you think they not meddling. They meddling. Yeah. They nosy. Very nosy. 
Oh, and another thing is we are censored in what conversation we have in the open. But I guess that's the same as having a kid in your house. How do you all keep your marriage life separate and sex life while having an in-law living with you? A very loud TV. Yeah. Turn the skit up. Get behind closed doors because really that's your only option. Oh, or late at night. Very, real, real late. Re early re in the morning. Yeah, early in the morning or real late. Or have weekends where you go and you rent. Yeah, go to a resort, set. man. Yeah, a resort, a hotel yeah. or something like that. And fuck they place up. I know y'all been together for a while now, but what did you guys learn about each other, good and bad, during this quarantine? I learned that my husband is one of the hardest working people that I know. I've also learned that he has a corporate voice. We all know that we do it, but you don't actually ever... <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to figure out where you're going. You don't mind. actually... You're never exposed to it. It's like, <laughs> we're going to pencil that. And we're gonna circle back to that. <laughs> You're the circle back guy. <laughs> you wanna put a pen in it? <laughs> you wanna formulate an email? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're that dude that's gonna pencil something. Yeah, in. yeah. I, I mean, I kind of, I kind of make that paper some kind of way, right? <laughs> I know how to turn it off when it when, when time to clock out. I know when to turn it off. I also know how to pencil stuff and formulate a message. <laughs> uh, bad. My husband and I, we speak all day, every day. And it's cute. It ain't cute when you're in the same house. And they just walk up on you every five to ten minutes. And then with me being home, and I'm finally off of off of restriction per the doctor. He thinks that his 15 minute breaks are our 15 minute breaks. Hey, wait, 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 one minute. That's a half it's not a of half. a truth. It's not a half of Cause I remember the last time it went down, you was the one that pulled, I came in to take a pay pay, <laughs> and you was the one that pulled me in. It's half truth. No, no, no. It was me that time. But Stanley is very codependent. He loves his wife, no doubt. Oh yeah. And he is drawn to wherever I am, to the point where I have to tell him, leave and close the door. This is what's happening during the quarantine right here. <laughs> this, this is what's happening right here. The only reason Maurice, why you started look, this. Look, look, Maurice, the only reason why I see her, because the way that our house is set up is where my office is, there is a bathroom right here, but that's mama's bathroom. He won't use her bathroom. No, so I go to our room, and I gotta come through there to pay me. So of course you gonna see me. I would say the the good thing about my baby, she has really stepped up. Um, I was the one that will fix breakfast every morning, and she done kicked in and whatever I want for breakfast, and I just put my order in. And most time I don't, she just, cause she, you know, she the master cook, so. That's been such a blessing for me to be able to, I, I don't think I'll be able to really do the overtime and the time hard work that she said I've done without her kicking in. Do a I, I, I can't say nothing bad besides her lying on me. <laughs> Lonnie, if you watching this, she is lying. Cause oh, you see me be on, no, he's on not, line no. for hours doing my work. Hey Lonnie, he, he don't be over there trying to get none during work hours. <laughs> Once again, y'all, thank y'all so much for submitting the questions. This was hella fun. This it was. was. And uh, we hope that y'all enjoyed it. Can you get your elbow out the back of my head? You got me feel like Christopher <laughs> Reeves over here. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Chew up. Chew down. down. Holla. <laughs> <laughs>